The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. It's a Halloween spooktacular player's man. lounge. Look at the lights, man. They done changed the ambience in here and everything. I didn't even know these joints did that. Fresh, they man. turn orange on you. Yeah, that was Cowboys, money, man. Money, you can money. do anything. I mean, they, what other color can they can they get it? Man, they <laughs> I don't even want to know. Wait till Christmas. <laughs> <Man. laughs> uh, lights going on everywhere, man. I don't <laughs> even want to know. SWBC? Yeah, it's a, lo- it's a lot of spooky stuff going on yeah. in the building, but you know what it is? Another. It's another Tuesday here on the Players' Lounge. Yeah, You're yes, now sir. Yes, sir. rocking with the best. I'm Heckman Harrison, and that's Danny McCray in a Chucky outfit. Fit. Yeah, man. Listen, we got. I told we got everything here. Oh, okay. oh. The Chucky yeah, Dunks? Yeah, yeah, man, you ought to be sharing yourself with all the brands. Look at everything, baby. We see, friends about your man. man's too. Yeah, my man's in here, man. man. I brought a special guest. You know, man. want to come holler at y'all on I Halloween? He only man. come out once. I really don't. Uh, seriously, I don't even know how I feel about that. He like right. I said, he better not say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better not hit a button. He better not move. Watch how you talk to him. Now, watch how you handle him. I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems. Me, hey, me, me neither. Barry Church is in the building on. Yes, on a Tuesday, um, Monday Night Football went off last night, and mm. Danny McRae, other others, the other other boy, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Talking about it's so cold in the D. <laughs> <laughs> D-, you D- ain't lying. Yeah, Detroit, they Detroit, they did. They, they look they good. Did. I don't know, Jared Goff. He, you know, he he came out had a little rough one at the start, but after that, man, St. Brown, that dude is. He's the truth. He's, he's real. I mean, and then you got Gibbs got out there over like 150. Montgomery not even playing. I know. But that brings the, the physicality to it when you put Montgomery the, in there. My tight end, the tight end, Laporte. Laporta. Laporta, yeah. Mm, he he different. Work. They he just, work. And the defense is playing well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we knew that every team in the league is likely going to go through one of those games where you're like, oh, man, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that game for the Detroit Lions was last week, and they came out and looked like they knew that they needed to get back on track, and that's what they did. And, exactly. and, and poor Devontae. Man, you hate to see it, man. <laughs> he should have had a 60-yarder. should have had a 70-yarder. They just can't get the ball to the man, man. But Garoppolo, man. Talk, the man. drop-off. The dro- I mean, this is a guy that's gotten chance after chance after chance. Yeah. Even after that Super Bowl, Super Bowl loss where they seemingly had it in the bag. All they needed was Garoppolo to either make one more throw or hand the ball off one more time. And man, people just continue to believe in this guy. And they writing them checks for him. They, they, they cut the oh, yeah. check. They I don't know. Checks. I don't know if it's his state. They paying him for the stadium walk or what? Hey, <laughs> or what they what, what they is. doing? But man, those two. That one ball that he threw, it was so bad. I mean, he, he overthrew, missed him, missed him wide open. But let me tell you something. That. That Detroit Lions defense is for real. Mm-hmm. I mean, legit. It was, they, they are legit. Um, but that secondary, mm-hmm. it can it, be had. It can be. I see it. It can I be see, had. So when y'all got finished, when y'all got finished watching the game, I know I had my thoughts about Detroit, and I just want to put eyes on them and just see them in real time how they play. I was impressed, but where are you putting them right now as far as in the NFC? Even with the way that San Francisco's playing and how everybody is right now midseason, would you rank Detroit as your number one in the NFC right now? No, I think I got them at the Eagles are at number one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. they lost one game so far. They know how to play, you know, from behind, ahead, whatever it is they need to do. They figure figure out a way to win. I think Detroit, like I said, they went in the opener. They beat Kansas City, and no matter what happened with Denver, mm-hmm. they went up to Kansas City and they beat Kansas City. They okay, they and they've been playing good and getting better ever since. Besides that one little lull that they had, um, so to me, Detroit. Probably number two. Number two. Mm-hmm. Because it was San Francisco, and they didn't mm-hmm. drop three straight, okay? So they they haven't been able to lose and then get back on track. So Detroit, number two. Then you got us Dallas Cowboys out here sitting in number three. Mm-hmm. And then you got the Seahawks. But you think about that. We I'm, As I named those four, we got to play three of them and one yeah. of them twice. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, that's, down the road. And, and that's the big thing about where you see the Cowboys right now in this, in this schedule. That's, you got some tough games coming up in between with the Carolina, with the Giants. I think that's the only relief that you have. After that, dog. It gets real. It gets real mm-hmm. uh, with this season. But one of the big things that we brought up about this show today was the identity 
of the Dallas Cowboys and just seeing like now over the last six games that we that we have seven games that we've seen from them so far the season started without us actually knowing who they were mm-hmm. I think after seeing them seven games in sample size there it mm-hmm. is but I think there's an identity looming and growing right now from two you guys two ex players what do you believe that that identity is? And BC, I start with you. Okay, yeah, I, I thought going into this season, um, the formula for success because we saw it in the first two games yeah. was, you know, let Tony Pollard eat a little bit. We're going to live off of this play action, and we're going to ride, you know, this defense. And the defense is going to, you know, be the strength of this team. Now, I still feel as though the defense is the strength, and we're only going to go as far as that defense takes us. But offensively, I think it went from, you know, we're going to ground and pound, control the clock, we're going to be all that. To now, I think it's kind of morphed and developed into kind of a Dak Prescott led offense. When you talk about we're going to, you know, live and die by this arm. And, you know, for the past two weeks, I granted, you know, they went against the Chargers who had, you know, a terrible defense. <laughs> and, you know, the Rams who, you know, are Aaron Donald or Bust, they went against those two offenses or two defenses. But when you look at what the offense has been able to do, Dak Prescott has been extremely accurate. He's been able to move the football. And the rushing numbers have gone way down. They've gone way down since the beginning of the season. I mean, Tony Pollard, I mean, the last, you know, three games before this this uh, this L.A. Rams game, he only had 34 carries in three of those games. All three games, 34 carries. So, to me, I think this offense kind of morphed a little bit and it's kind of going with Dak Prescott, who's the hot hand right now. Now, I don't know if that'll change if, you know, we go against a defense and it's going back and forth and we got to get more balanced or whatever the case may be. But I think the identity of this offense going from now going forward will be, you know, Dak Prescott in his arm. Yeah, listen, I, going into the season, listening to Mike McCarthy and all he said about we're going to be a running team, we're going to play to our defense, mm-hmm. I know what the strength of our team is, I did expect us to be a full-on running team. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, I think we tried. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we did everything we could. We yeah. tried. We were talking about the running backs, talking about Dowdle. We were talking about Deuce Vaughn. We were talking about Tony Pollard. And start off the season, just based off how the games were going, I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, we we are we trying mm-hmm. to run the ball and we playing to our defense. And then we hit that wall. Uh, actually, actually, I'm sorry. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Go Goodness ahead. gracious. We ran into Arizona That's first. That's what's yeah. first. Ran into Arizona first. Yeah. And then, then we ran into that wall of like, okay, how do we play if our running game isn't isn't going as we expect it to go, right? right? So I think we got into the point of like trying to figure out what that was, and now I think it's led us to like not really have an identity. Like I don't I don't really know what what the identity of the offense is if, if I'm a defensive coordinator. Like, what does this team want to do? Like, what mm-hmm. do we need to stop? I don't really know what that is, and I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. I think we'll figure it out. But what I do think is as you get deeper into the season and you start playing some of those away games in the cold, because mm-hmm. a lot of our games right now have been inside, or, you know, yeah, warm AC, weather, all that yep, stuff. Yep. Once you start going out and, and it's 30 degrees outside, probably how it's going to be this uh, Sunday, um, you're looking and you're saying, okay, how do you play then? Because that's when teams like to really focus on mm-hmm. running the ball because the ball doesn't travel as well. You know, you start to see guys dropping passes mm-hmm. or the weather kind of affects you a little bit. So I think we'll see it. We're going to have to get back to the running game. But I don't know what the identity is. I have no idea. Uh, you know, it'll take four weeks. Right now we're in week two of Dak Prescott-led playing offense. Well. Playing well. And give me two more weeks of it. If I see Dak Prescott do this for two more weeks, then we back to, you know, when he was 5,000 yards, 40 passes a game. There and, we, you know, we putting the, putting the game on his shoulders. So you're saying that the identity is there is no identity right right, right now. I think we're, <laughs> okay. I think we're in a transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we had an identity like what we wanted to be. Okay, and you saw us come out, try to run the ball and play to our defense. Right, kicking the field goals, not really scoring touchdowns in the red zone, red zone, but being mm-hmm. okay with kicking field goals. And then you see that that didn't work yeah. as, as well as you had planned for it to. And now we come out and you're like, okay, the the game for the Chargers. I don't know. All yeah. right, maybe that's just how it played out. But then you go on a bye week and you come out, and then you see how they play. Then, like I'm watching the first quarter, and I'm like, I thought we was gonna be running the ball on first down, yeah. second down, and seeing what we did on third. Nah, they was they was running boots. Dak was throwing the seam. Yeah. So so they came out, and it wasn't that same identity of like we're gonna be a physical running I mean, run the ball team. I mean, you look at it. Even when we jumped ahead, even when the Cowboys jumped ahead in that game, you thought, all right, it's time to you know milk this clock down, get up out of here. No, you saw Prescott still out there slanging that thing, hitting Cooks, hitting Ceedee Lamb, getting his numbers big. It wasn't like okay, you know, let's 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 turn around, hand the ball off, get up out of here. They were still exploiting that secondary for the Rams. So like you said, I think this this offense kind of developed and kind of evolved into a kind of a Dak Prescott, at least for these past. 
last two weeks. Question for you. So do you, I think, and I also think that you have to do that, right? Because I think that's what kind of get, gets you in trouble in those first few games of like you get up mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you play that, okay, we're going to run the ball, get the clock out, whatever. We don't, we don't have to try to work on our offense because we're just going to be vanilla with it. And then you get into the next week, right? And then you're like, oh, wait, we didn't work on nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we didn't We didn't really get that's the chance true. because we were playing, playing smart. And then – this game, you get up and you're like, nah, we still need to work. This is the best opportunity we're going to have to make our offense get better and have our receivers and our quarterbacks clicking on all cylinders, and I think they took advantage of it. Shout out to Brandon Cooks. Shout out he to C.D. Lamb. Michael Gallup played his part. Got Gallup. And – and our tight ends yeah. as a whole I can't believe played Gallo well. Fit there. I Gallo can't played his no, he played his part is what I said. Don't he, his part was two was it two for two? two he did his thing. He played his part. He Miller played. catch right there. Yeah, <laughs> Miller catch. Hey, yeah. that's what we needed. That's what we need. Hey, that's what man we need. Room, though, but I got to be Paula. My question though, sign that franchise. <laughs> he ain't see it. No go no close to it. <laughs> so y'all y'all peep how I do this because I, I I wrote Jerry Madelon a long email on how to ask questions and not lead the witness. Wow. Okay, so he didn't see it. I had you, to get in the lab. I you, had to. Yo, you needed to. <laughs> so you, man, so, I was 35 seconds. I didn't rewind. So, and still. another thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so peep how I frame this. Uh -huh. So basically, do you trust Dak Prescott the way that you're saying if the identity is Dak? Where is your trust level with Dak right now being the identity of this offense? Look, when, we, when we talk regular season, I'm, I'm at an eight. When you talk about Dak Prescott, regular season, what he's been able to do uh, these past two games, he's flowing, he's doing great. But if you're asking me, am I going to trust this come playoff time? Yes. If that's the case, as of right now, I got I to say no because we just go by what was Nui saying, time, proof, and consistency. And what's happened you know, since he's been in the playoffs, um, each and every time he's gone in there, it hasn't been the greatest when we talk about you know getting to that next level. Did he have a great game against Tampa Bay? Of course, he lit him up, five touchdowns. But then that very next week, you know, it was it was three interceptions. It was kind of a no show. So when you talk about playoffs, I'm not there yet. But as of right now, these these two games building up. Yeah, I'm confident. I'm confident going forward. So we got we got a big matchup. All right, the Philadelphia it's Eagles week. That's what everybody's talking about. You can't turn on the television without seeing Cowboys Eagles. But the biggest thing for me is the one on one matchups. It's a ton of one on one matchups in this game. Like you just go through the roster, and, and I sent them all out to you guys, but. The one I'm gonna I'm choose b between the few that we have, okay? Okay, lead have, the witness. Lead all right, the witness. Nope, nope, not leading the witness. <laughs> I'm just giving you giving you the choices that you have. <laughs> all right, all right. Number one is gonna be Mike McCarthy and Dak versus Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go uh, Darius Slay, C.D. Lamb. Uh, I believe the other one. What do we have? What do we have? Darius Slay, C.D. Lamb. You got huh? Gilly and the Slim Reaper. I got mm. the, all right. Mm. Stephon <laughs> Gilmore versus Devontae Smith. That's the, that two big matchups. Then you have AJ Brown versus Deron Bland. Mm. Another big matchup. Now you have number eleven, uh, Lane Johnson versus Michael Parsons. Mm. Big matchup. Okay. Um, how, I mean, guys, this is a this is a lot of different one versus one v one matchups. What's going to be the biggest one for you guys? Mm, you want me to go first? You guys, uh, listen uh, to me. The, we, we and we only doing one v one. And you know what? You can go O line D line because because <laughs> I know you I, I, know, I, know, I know I know I usually do that, but like I like that is it. <laughs> that is it. How did we start the game off against the L A Rams? Yeah. I, man, I, them first that first drive, I was like, you know what? We is about to be a day. It reminded me of Adrian Claiborne when Tyra Smith didn't play. I was like, oh this my is, god, no! This is about to be. That's what it looked like. Yeah. So yeah. So when you when you think about the Philly defensive line versus our off, like what is our offensive line going to look like once we get to the game? Mm -hmm. Is Tyron Smith healthy? Right? Is is he going to play? And then. How do we handle guys like Carter and is a and is a Hassan Reddick? Yeah. How do we Hassan like how, how do we how do we handle those type of guys, mm -hmm. especially if we are now transitioning into not being the running team, but essentially being a passing team? Mm -hmm. Like how how do you handle that? Um, you know, with a team like the Eagles, I I don't know. So to me, that is a group. But then the one on one, I don't know. It's Gilly and Bland versus AJ Brown. 
because because he's going to move all over the place. And I don't think Dan Quinn is going to have have these corners traveling. Yeah. I think they're going to stay on their side. So I think A.J. Brown is going to get work on both sides. So I think how our secondary matches up and is able to contain A.J. Brown. It's difficult to stop a guy like that, but don't let him go crazy like 135 over the last, you know what I'm saying, five games like the rest of these teams have been doing. Figure out a way to stop him. That is the matchup to me. Well, yeah, when I look at this game overall, man, I just I don't like it for the Dallas Cowboys because I mean we all understand the NFL is it's a game about matchups. It's all that's all it is. It's a game about matchups. And when you look at it, where do you see the Cowboys having an advantage at? And when I look at it, I'm I'm looking at the skill positions. You I'm talking about Philly's offense versus the Dallas okay. Cowboys defense. If if you put a safety over the top or if you got, you know, too high to make sure Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown don't go off, okay, I see that. I can see the secondary doing something like that. But then you're lighting the box. Then instead of having an eight-man box, you're down to a seven or a six-man box. And we all understand what Philly brings to the table, rushing the ball. Absolutely. That's an RPO yep. read. That's down your throat. They're going straight at you. So if you do that, if you want to take away, you know, the Slim Reaper and you want to take away A.J. Brown by having those safeties over top, you're going to be lighting the box. And then if you try to bring those guys in there, like an extra safety, like a curse or a – um, a, 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 a Donovan Wilson, man, I was all caught up in there. <laughs> Try to bring those guys into the box. Then it leaves uh, Bland and Gilly on one-on-one islands out there with the Slim Reaper and A.J. Brown. I don't like that matchup as well. So, to me, I, this game is about matchup, and I don't like what the Dallas Cowboys are going to have to do against the Philadelphia hey, Eagles. I'm, has, I'm not a big fan so right now. So, Deron Bland has still not won you over. No, he's a, he's, a, he's, okay. he's a good player. He is a really good player, ball magnet. The guy is, you know, way better than what I ever thought he would be. But you're talking about going against possibly the number two receiver in all of football right now who's been on a tear. Six straight games over. Who's better? I mean, Tyreek Hill, I can only throw yes. out. That's okay. the only one. That's yeah. the only one. This guy's got six straight games of 125-plus yards. He's a big, physical jump ball go-getter. So, I mean, it, it, it's going to be a tough matchup so, either way. So, how does our, how is, how does our then – because a lot of our secondary is dependent on how our defensive line plays. That's it. Right? And our, that and is our ability right to rush the passer. So I think the way that we help that is, hey, Dan Quinn, what type of looks do we have? We saw Michael over the center yeah. last game. How, how, how much are you moving him around? And then – making his one-on-ones <laughs> be true. something that then helps Deron Bland, Stephon Gilmore, Jordan Lewis, and the rest of those guys on the back end. I think your pass rush has to come alive because if you don't get pressure, you'll look just like the San Francisco 49ers. When mm-hmm. they get pressure, un- uh, almost unbeatable uh, mm-hmm. as far as defensively. Mm-hmm. When they ain't getting no pressure, they look just like any other team. That's and true. I think that'll be the same for us. And and when I looked at the, the Rams game, to me was, was going to be how they were going to compete versus Philadelphia with Puka and Cup. The, the matchup because you know mm-hmm. what both of those wide receivers mm-hmm. bring on the other side for A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith Devontae is a burner he just flat out he, he can fly and mm-hmm. and maybe they won't travel but I think you depend on that matchup to be the same as last weekend because if those two guys can can hold their own then that still allows you to do what you just talked about putting pressure on Jalen Hurts because then you can you don't have so to lighten if Gillian Bland can hold exa- their own exa- okay. exactly okay. because it, otherwise you have to change two much of your defense. Yeah, you, 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 you take the you, aggressiveness out of you it. Can't, yeah. You can't lighten the box versus a team that can, can destroy you that's top 10 in the league in rushing. Mm-hmm. Like, all of those things. And now you now you put their full arsenal uh, up. And I'm and I'm sorry. I'm sure. And Dan Quinn, I trust too. But I, I'm sure he's thinking the same thing. I cannot start this game by showing favorable coverage to either one of these guys. Mm-hmm. Because if I do that, Jalen Hurts at this point in his career, he can read that. I, I have to go back and check, but I, I just don't see Dan Quinn as, as historically being one of those guys who who Travis. puts a lot of resources oh, yeah. to yeah. one specific person versus depending on his ability to call the plays at the right time and having his players in the right position. I just don't see us unless we out there just getting killed, yeah. <laughs> which True. which, which hasn't is. which hasn't happened. I, I see him calling the, calling the game to where he helps when he can when he can, but he's going to depend on the players who have been standing up for him this entire season. We haven't we haven't had a game mm-hmm. where they just went out there and just got killed. Like you see uh, IU running the, the dig routes and cover two or whatever coverage we in, and you see us get caught in that a few times. But outside of that, we have we have performed well. Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm talking about turnovers, mm-hmm. pass break, whatever mm-hmm. it is, they have performed well against any receivers that they've gone against, and that's including Cooper Cup and uh, Nakua uh, Puka Nakua, who we had said, hey man, they may be. Uh, one of the top duos in the league. And I'm gonna have to, let me go back to the trenches a little bit here, and let's go. You know, Dallas's defensive line or their pressure versus the Eagles, who have an outstanding, 
outstanding offensive line. And I think what we saw last week, the reason, you know, Stafford couldn't get to Cup, he couldn't get to Puka Nakua and those boys out there was because we saw that pressure. We saw what he was able to bring. Did they have, uh, you know, 17 sacks out there? No, but they were able to make life hard for Matt Stafford out there. So we fast forward to this game against the Eagles. We all know Parsons hasn't had the greatest of success against Lane Johnson on that outside. I mean, that dude is one of the top tackles in the National Football League. So if you're Dan Quinn, do you kind of use them like you did last week as far as moving them around as a chess piece? Because there's not really a lot of weak links to this Philly offensive line. You talk about putting them, you know, over the center. You got Kelsey, who's, you know, Hall of Fame right. center in, in that regard. So if you're Dan Quinn, do you move them around to try to find that best matchup? Or you kind of just leave them my, over there with Lane John? I mean, that's a tough that's My tough. My answer is literally continue to do what you've been doing with Michael. Don't change it up. Don't change it up now because I think that's what makes the defense so dynamic and you can bring pressure from so many different areas because right now the Philly offensive line has to concentrate on where is number 11. Mm-hmm. Even with the guys that they have that are so good, the Kelseys and the Johnsons and everybody else, they are going to be susceptible and you got to ask your guys, you got to ask your guys, can you win your one-on-one matchup? Osa Diggy Zoo, you're going to have to win your one-on-one matchup. Tank, you're going to have to win your one-on-one matchup because you're going to have it because of the way that they move Michael around. Uh, listen, let me tell you what I don't like about this conversation. Philly is a running team. <laughs> <laughs> like let's, let's let's just get let's get back to that part of like okay we talking about pass rushing and one on ones for Micah and D'Lon they are a running team absolutely and if any team is going to force you to earn the right to rush the passer it's yeah, going to yeah. be the Philadelphia they Eagles stick with it. They <laughs> so stick with it. so what you're gonna need to do because we talking about like where you gonna put Micah there will be third downs where Philly decides they're going to run the ball yeah. <laughs> against you yeah. right and you, if you sitting out there figuring out how you gonna pass rush and they ready to run a <laughs> lead or a draw or a quarterback Back, a quarterback option on you, a uh, read option, then, then you're in trouble, right? So this team here is going to force you to play play honest on first and second down, and if you get them in third and long, that's when you're going to be able to then release the dogs on them. But if you don't, th- we talked about this before before the show started. Their running game is for real. No, Swift, it is. For real. When game welcome, for real. Like, all, like they have a consistent uh, way to attack these defenses, either with the running backs or quarterbacks or both. So – Protect the run. Yeah, big matchup, I, and, I, and I feel you, and I, and I completely agree with you on, on that. The other matchup for me that we didn't mention is Dak Prescott, Jalen Hurts. This is These are two quarterbacks, and the, the head coaches as well, mm-hmm. all right? People are not giving Mike McCarthy his, his respect. They didn't give it to him in the, uh, in the game versus McVay last week. They're not going to give it to him this week if he pulls out the victory. But the truth is, for me, Dak, th- these two, Dak and, and Mike, this is a big matchup for them mm. because we keep asking the same question. What do you do when you come up against a team with a with a winning rec- record and a team that has beat you before? All right. The matchup and, you know, this is a litmus test with all these different things. But true and true indeed, you finally got to get a signature win on your on your on your record mm-hmm. when you lose when you get embarrassed by the 49ers. And this is again, this is that game versus Philadelphia, a division foe. That no matter how you look at it, it's Philly, Dallas. We hate them. They hate us. We playing them in Philly. In Philly. It needs to be a primetime game, but you know how big this is for everything that's going on around here because if you have the same type of showing that you have versus the 49ers, oh, dog. You got to be 20 off the plane right here. You got to be 20 off the plane, dog. Tasty cake. You got to have 20 off the plane. <laughs> tasty you, I mean, cake. for real. No, they're going to be eating some tasty cake. <laughs> they're going to be eating tasty cake you hope they eat tasty cakes yeah, on the game. Better hope. Better hope. <laughs> Boy, I'm saying a lot of that hope. Boy. Mm. But uh, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. We're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we're going to have a – I guess we're going around the table for movies – that remind us of the Dallas Cowboys season special Halloween edition of the Players Lounge. We'll be right back after this. Got you though, don't worry. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of you and everyone else absolutely loving new smoothie bowls from Smoothie King. And woo, me too. 
These smoothie bowls start with acai and pitaya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. New smoothie bowls, only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash hugoboss, at hugoboss.com, and at boss retail stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big belt buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. The Salvation Army 27th Annual Red Kettle Kickoff returns to AT&T Stadium this Thanksgiving. Get excited to watch the one and only Dolly Parton rock the stage during halftime when your Dallas Cowboys go head-to-head with the Washington Commanders. Tune in at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Back at the Star in Frisco for the second segment of the Players' Mm -hmm. Lounge, Heckman Harrison, Danny McCray, and Barry Church is in the building for a Halloween. Fellas, the question was or, or was was asked what does what movie or television series reminds you of the 2023 Dallas Cowboys up until this point Danny McCray who would you say I'm gonna go with Game of Thrones oh I'm gonna go with GOT okay. well, you, well, you, you you never know you never know who is gonna get knocked off in that movie yeah, okay true indeed. and we go in, I mean in that TV show right and you go in That's there nice. and it's a, it's a battle for the throne to me which is the Super Bowl all right and we go in there against Arizona right yeah, and they take out the main character us how do you kill a star? Ned Stark <laughs> mm. taken out in the first <laughs> in the first season how? right and then you know and, 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 and this is the same thing for the Cowboys and then all, all throughout the season right Game of Thrones okay we got uh, the Kansas City Chiefs Mm-hmm. Go out there and they get knocked out by the Denver Broncos, right? The and Red then, Wedding. But then, <laughs> but then we show up, we show up, right? And we put forty and forty and thirty five and forty on, on on teams, and we're just trying to figure out like where are we? Like where are we right mm-hmm. now? I really just don't understand. But as I go throughout the season, I'm always on sitting. I'm like this here. I'm worried every time I watch a game because I never know. No matter who we play, Giants, Seahawks, whoever it is. We just don't know who gonna show up for us. Game mm. of Thrones. We don't know what we gonna look like. That, hey, that's fine. I can I give you that. Who, who you got, man? Me. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. This season kind of reminds me. I'm gonna go another television show like my man uh, McCray did, and I'm gonna go to Sopranos. All right, Sopran- I'm gonna say this. You new to the Sopranos? Yeah, it's still right here. It's still all right here. No, that was one of my favorite shows, man. Nah, I love was, it. That was definitely. I'm glad you, you uh, told me to get on that. But when I look at the Cowboys, they, they kind of remind me of Tony, the man guy out there. All right, no matter what's going on. He's always got to find an avenue to win. Always, no matter what. His, his main plug gets taken out, whatever the case may be, he's got to find a way to win. And that's what the same thing with the Dallas Cowboys. We started out extremely hot. The New York teams, we ran through them, blowouts. Then we run into a, a Arizona team, and man, they reopened that wound when you talk about running the football. They yeah. almost rushed for 200 yards, man. We got to we gotta pivot. We got to find some way to win. We uh, go against, I think the, the Patriots was next after that. Went over there and, and Motley whopped them. Found a way to win. <laughs> next thing you know, we go against the San Francisco 49ers. We contain McCaffrey, but the passing game hurts us. I'm like, man, what are we going to do? Like, What's going on? Here comes De'Ron Bland. Pivot. We found a way to win. All right, De'Ron Bland's taking the football away. We're getting that pass rush back alive. And now look at it. Two-game winning streak, and we're heading to one of the biggest games there is. So to me, uh, this team is kind of like the Sopranos, kind of like Tony, always pivoting, trying to find a different Just, avenue to win. I, mean, I know you're a recent watcher, but we do all know. We all know what happened to Tony at the end of the, we end of the show. We don't know for sure. <laughs> oh, we know. He, was we, eating. he came He came out and said it. <laughs> all yeah. right, they came hey, out and said it. What happens in the playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> we all know. So you, you, you probably don't even feel it when it happens, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you hope. Darkness. <laughs> darkness. 
this show. He says, hey, Jesus, is that you? <laughs> he, he just, I get up here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was, that's like that uh, social media dude, like self defense. He, he trying to block the gun. He, oh, yeah. He, he, he in Heaven's <laughs> Gates. Like, but I'm going to pick for my movie uh, because of, uh, well, not so much a Halloween movie, but it does have the blood aspect of it. And that's Kill Bill. Mm. One of our oh. Quentin Tarantino movie, Kill Bill. And it's because of that list, that kill list. All right. The Cowboys have a kill <laughs> list to kill Bill. And we got some names on our list. And we crossed through a couple of them. But this Sunday, we got Bill on the list, dog. And we right. this is this is that game. This is that game. This is that enemy that did you wrong. That you know him, you got that history, it plays out for decades and decades. Nate Newton, it goes back further than a lot of guys. They hate the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. Kill Bill is that movie for me. I just want to be sure, Uma ain't taking no losses in Kill Bill. No, she did. She She did get buried alive. She got buried alive. Bug got her. Bug got her. Trust me. But when you get buried alive, you got to pull a shank out your boot to get get yourself out of this. That's what we had to do. Arizona, that was our game. We got buried got alive. Buried alive 49 49ers, they buried us alive. But I wanted to talk to y'all about Philly, man. Philly's Philly's running game. We hadn't got that did enough talking about it. And, and this is the respect level that I have just by watching this team. They just bludgeon you up front. In take the take notes. Hey, if you listen to take notes, okay, listen listen to Heck when he is about to give some props to the Philadelphia Eagles. This was stuff mm. you might not ever hear mm. again. They only All right. Know you. Gather, All right, so here we go. Gather around here while I run it down. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell and DeAndre Swift. To me, two very formidable running backs in this league that can run inside the tackle, but also, man, what they do when they get to the outside. Mm. We know – and I go back to last year's Green Bay game. It just felt like we had no answer for Green Bay attacking us out on the edges. I still see, and I'm going back to the up 20 off the plane game, uh, uh, October the 16th, when I was like, yo, we're we going to go in there with defense going to record the bazooka. Fit. <laughs> with, with Cooper Rush, <laughs> with, with Cooper, what was I thinking? Man. Why did I put a team? Were you thinking? Why? 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 Oh, hey, man. Hey, man. That man threw 20. three interceptions. Man, that was bad. I'm talking up twenty off the plane. They almost had twenty to zero at, at the in the first half. When they kicked that field goal, I was the happiest man in Dallas. I was like, Lord, please don't let us be. But down they fought. Came back though. They, they, they did. fought. Yeah, they, 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 they fought. 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 They came back. But either way, it was one of those games where your defense was exposed. They showed like, man, you can run on this defense. Mm-hmm. And what did everybody else do? They ran yeah, on this right defense. Now, they, took, they took it to them. So this running game for me, this is that time. This is another one of those tests where we flunked that test against San Francisco in their running game, so to speak. I mean, they, they moved the ball mm-hmm. at will on us. Do you look at this as another test for this defensive, this defensive unit in stopping uh, Philly's running game? Yeah. The, go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. The Night King. The Night King. <laughs> <laughs> the nah. Night King, man. Hey, Why yeah. they do the Night King like that? Hey, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But they scared of no. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I'm still not sure if we are able to stop the run. If we are a good run stopping team, when you mm-hmm. face a team that really focuses on running the ball, um, so this this will be a test. Because I think this will be the best running team that you play against. Um, the quarterback can run. You got two service of wide, wide receivers. A.J. Brown, every, every once in a while, they bring him on the end of the round. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you have the opportunity to figure out if you can stop to run this game. It does make me nervous because, like I said, we, we go into the draft, we get a number one draft pick, and we, we, get a, uh, we get a defensive tackle. And my hope for that was – not an Aaron Donald type guy, but a guy who you say, okay, he's a difference maker, uh, you know, playing inside in three technique or one technique, wherever you have him at. And we just haven't seen that yet. So to me, it looks like we are just person personnel wise the same as we were last year when it comes to running the ball. And oh yeah, Leighton Van Der Esch out. We got some young guys coming in. We got an undersized guy and Bell who comes down to play, even though he's been playing well. If they get into a game where it's 30, 30 runs, then we're gonna figure out you know, what type of run-stopping team we are. So it does make me nervous. Do I think we could do it? I think we can get it done. But I'm just not – I'm not I'm not 
super confident in the fact that we're going to be able to stop the Philadelphia run game. And then, oh, yeah, you see him add a new wrinkle to the tush push. Mm. Oh, pass <laughs> off. I mean, that, that was real. But <laughs> since, since you ran with the reference, I'm going to go ahead and get one myself. Who, what was the, the nephew's name? Moltisanti. Moltisanti. from Moltisanti. That's the, that's, that's the run game against this defense. How many times you going to let that man mess up what you got going on before you got to, you know, take, gotta, it, gotta. take him out? You gotta, before, how many times are he going to mess just up? Kept messing up? And that's how many times this run game has hurt the Dallas Cowboys in the past and this year. It's, it's time after time after time we talk about it. It's the Achilles heel. If we can get that run game situated, this defense will take off. So to me, it's just how many times is it going to hurt you before it's time to just lace him up and, and, and get rid of it? So hopefully that comes with this game, but I'm not liking the matchup. I, I just don't. You talked about that offensive line and what they do best. They just lean on you. They put that weight on you. They put that pressure on you, and they move defenders out of the way. And you got an explosive, quick running back in Swift with that RPO action. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard because it's not just a regular downhill run game. It's, all right, this guy could hand it off. He can pass it. He can keep it himself, and it kind of keeps defenses stalling like that. That's how right. they did the big bazooka the first matchup going around. They made him think too much, and that slowed him down. So to me, we're going to get this run game stopped. It's going to be a must, but whew, it's going to be a tough time doing Man, it. I'm taking notes over here. Okay, Church, right receiver, right receiver versus uh, defensive backs, Eagles. Okay, mm-hmm. you're going with the Eagles. Mm-hmm. O-line, D-line, you're going with the Eagles. Mm-hmm. I, I see where you're leaning at uh, going toward the end of this I week. Told you, I don't like All these right. matchups. I'm just, I I'm told just, y'all. I'm just taking you notes. already know. Because, I told see, y'all. I, and the reason I'm taking notes is because I know this. Come tomorrow or Thursday, Hick will be over here talking about I was the guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> it was you me. don't like the matchup. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to just be like, yeah, <laughs> you don't say nothing. You say church. Church It's not me, bro. <laughs> I'm over here like intently. Look at me, dog. Jerry said, "Keep your hands together. Listen intently." Mm-hmm. You know, what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and I ain't said uh, nothing, dog. Like, I you know, look. I, I agree, and, and the fact that you would put cement shoes on your own nephew is really just a telltale <laughs> sign of you, man. He I had just, to get. He had to let him. <laughs> it was about time, bro. He almost killed. How many times he it like that? <laughs> Got his woman snitching. He, he, he all, yeah, I know. You know what I mean? He, he's all drugs, almost su- killed him. We're talking Sopranos here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talking, one, of my, one, of my, one of my all-time favorite shows. And the reason why I love The Sopranos is because at the end of the day, at the beginning of the show, Tony always go home. No matter what he did that night, <laughs> he go home. He huh? going to the crib. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of homeboys I've been telling that to over the years. Go, <laughs> go, home. go home, dog. <laughs> <laughs> go home, dog. Just go, go home, to the crib, man. man. <laughs> hey, but for, now that we're talking scheme as far as this running game is concerned, when you look at Jalen Hurts, if you're Dan Quinn, do you spy him mm-hmm. or do you come after him? I mean, you, you got two choices, and you got to, you, you've you seen over the, over the season and last year that a lot of teams pay. You're going to pay either way. You, you're going to spy him or you're going to come out there. What are you doing with Jalen? I'm, I'm bringing pressure uh, against Jalen. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it's not as good when you don't <laughs> bring pressure. When you just let him sit back there, have his pick of the litter, mm-hmm. or have the opportunity to also run if you get out of your lanes, you're just giving him too many avenues to beat you. All right? Mm-hmm. He's going to have to read coverages, find the hot routes. He's going to have to have his mind working, then also figure out, okay, which way should I run? Where is 11 at? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where That's is true. 90 at? Like, I'm going to make him think the entire game and I think that's the best opportunity you have at slowing him down. Yeah, you got to come after him. You, you got to bring a little bit of pressure and that might leave you light in the back end but hopefully that pressure can get home and we've seen it in the past. Dan Quinn, he's, he's come up with a lot of different schemes to get after quarterbacks so you're going to have to bring pressure because if you sit back there and only, you know, bring four, play coverage on the back end and have maybe Bell or somebody spy him, it's only a, you can only cover for so long and they got two dynamic threats out there and a quarterback that has a cannon for an arm. So if you sit back there and play coverage and have a spy just let you know Hurts sit back in the pocket, bounce a little bit, have these guys get open eventually. He, he's going to dice you apart. You got to speed things up for a guy like Hurts and force him into making bad decisions. And I think you can uh, get that accomplished if you bring a little bit of pressure. Well, we're going to take our final break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you guys as players, what is your mind state going into a divisional game like this, knowing that the media mm. circus is going to be there on Monday morning, whether you want it to or not? Coming up next on the Players' Lounge.
It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big bell buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together. We cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. Head to the Pro Shop at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, on Saturday, November the 4th, for the the final stop of the 2023 Cowboys collection on tour. See rare team archive customized headwear, grab a gift and purchase and enter for a chance to win a giveaway. That was the end of that. Right. Anyway, nice. that was, it was so smooth. You, you know what it was. We in it. We can go. I wasn't in here with it. G- 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 champ, champ, champ is out of here. <laughs> 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 I'm a kick, 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 kick. <laughs> Why we like this, man? <laughs> I tell you what, oh, you know, it's, it's a cold, it is a cold, yeah, cold man. world we cold live in, world. man. I, I wouldn't expect it to get it no other way on the players' lines. Mm-hmm. But, dog, I got to ask y'all, as players coming into a game like this, man, what's your mind state? Are you saying to yourself, well, we got to get this one? This is a must win. We got to represent no matter what. I mean, what is your mind state in that locker room coming off of victory and, and also a division foe? Yeah, I like I, I I like the fight against going to the must win situations because that it puts a lot of pressure on you. Mm. I think that's where you got to when you were playing San Francisco of like, mm. all right, we're gonna put everything into this game. This right here is the Super Bowl, mm. right? And then what happens is if you have a letdown, then it becomes a little bit more tougher for you to say, Okay, how how do we figure out a way to shake that's, back? That's true. Same thing here, okay, because you already went against your first measuring stick and, and it oh, didn't go God. well. Putting putting all your chips into this basket can really can really set you back. All right, so I'm going into this game saying, you know what? All we need to do is focus on playing as well as we can play, and whatever happens, happens. But I want to make sure we go out here, penalties, keep them down. Dak Prescott be efficient to uh, protect the ball, and defense. Can we figure out how to stop the run and continue taking the ball away? If we do all that and we lose, then we lost. Yeah, that's it. But that's we it. have to play well. We can't go out there and then come in here on Monday and be like, man, hey guys, like we just didn't play well as a team. Yeah. Because that's when you run into an issue. So my focus is, hey, man, I want to play as well as I can play. And then the result is the result. Yeah, that's, that's 100% right there. I'm with you on that. Um, you can't get too excited going into this game, too overhyped. Um, we talked about, well, knew we talked about that against San Francisco. And we see what happened. I mean, you got the penalties that were extending drives. Guys were just a little bit too overhyped. But as a player going into a rivalry game like this, you're going to be excited. You're going to be out there and you want to put your best foot forward and go out there and ball. But uh, McCray's 100% right. When you go into games like this, you got to make sure your job and your responsibility is taken care of. I mean, you got to understand that your teammates are going to do what they got to do. You got to trust the teammates to do their job. 
job, but you got to go in there with the mindset. I got to make sure my assignment is taken care of 100% of the time. And if you go out there and you do what you got to do, hopefully you get the dub. If not, it is what it is, but you can't go out there and just try to be a Superman. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm so hyped up for this game. I'm going to do everybody's job. I'm going to be the reason we win this game. Just focus on your responsibilities and hopefully you guys get the job done. And if you do that, then hey, you're looking like first place in the division. And, you know, I'm not surprised that you guys are going political on this right now. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? It's ex players. You know, I know y'all yeah. assignment, alignment, remember what you do. Don't get lost in the sauce. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I understand. No, you got to win this. You got to put it on yourself right now. You better win this one. Because as the 49ers talk, what were we saying? Man, the 49ers pulled off the, they came off the gas. It yeah. could have been worse. You got a division four that's not going to give you the same luxury. They're not going to say, oh, we need to pull out the gas on these people. You got embarrassed. You know that. Yeah. Watch this political response. No, nah, okay. I'm not going for that. Watch this what I'm political saying response is, to you. Because you, what you got to do, because what you got to do defensively, if Mike is going to go on this podcast and say that Philly's the number one team, then he got to show up. Dude, All well, right? He got to show up. I, hey, I need to see more crawling in this well, game. I need so, to, Well, somebody asked the I need more get crawling. Some, get some honey pulled on man. him or something. Well, he was, <laughs> most yeah, of them. Yeah, most yeah, of them yeah. were so good. <laughs> it was like, what even? But that, nah. Hey, spicy hey, back. What are we doing right now? your bear for some honey on me. No. Yeah. What? Listen, no, no. Before you leave, this this what? this, this, this is <laughs> this, this guy, man, this guy. Hey, man. You leading the he witness? You out of bounds? I didn't say it. Yeah, he man, said hey, it. He did say it. He said it. But anyways, uh, not help the but not help the bear. <laughs> help the bear. Help oh, honey, on me. Like, oh, I, heard, I heard the help the bear part. <laughs> uh, not the not the yeah, not the drizzle me, As man. The, <laughs> sprinkle me. <laughs> It's a different song. <laughs> different artist. <laughs> I don't know about that one. That's the remix. Yeah, I, can't, I never heard that one. Right, listen, listen. Don't, 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 y'all don't listen to heck, okay? Go what? out go out here and focus on, like me and Church said, playing the best that you can play, all right? Because listen I'm telling you, go, you go out here and you start playing that hero ball and not trusting the fact that your teammates are going to do what they got. Because that's what happens when people try to play hero ball. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that the dude who's supposed to be in the A-gap is going to be in the A-gap, so not you peeking in the A-gap. He ain't going to have an edge. <laughs> yeah. Let me go get, let me yeah. go get over he there. He ain't setting the edge. I'm going to run over there and I'm going to set the edge. Like, you know that guy. So you make sure y'all listen. Okay, if you need to be in the A-gap, get in the A-gap. Stay your butt in the A-gap. I get it. A-gap's under I, control. I, I, all that discipline stuff y'all talking about, <laughs> yes, I get it. I'm just saying for your playmakers, I need y'all to be playmakers. Mm -hmm. Michael, I need you to be on the attack. I need you to show this need to be one of those cups. If we're going to compare him to the greats, we're going to call him LT. Mm -hmm. it, LT don't disappear. You know, Derek Thomas didn't disappear. If we're going to call you that, then go and be that. And this is what I'm saying. We ain't seen enough crawling. I mean, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit of Halloween, Give me the crawl. On Sunday, that's all. That's all I'm we saying. Man. See, man. Yeah, we that's what, that's all we gonna do is see. That's what love football. That's why this is so good, dog. Mm -hmm. This football stuff. Can, did y'all ever just sit around and just let's go? This is so good, dog. This is. I wouldn't rather be nowhere else, dog. But look, tomorrow we'll be back. Two o'clock on the dot. My man D Mac is in the building. My man BC was in the building. Don't forget my homeboy. Better be glad Chucky ain't moved. Boy, yeah, Chucky man, just man. stay there and look just like he I seen him blink once. Like, he almost took off. He don't move. He don't move. When he moves, you, you won't even know. <laughs> yeah, so on that note, we'll see y'all tomorrow on the Players' Lounge. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!